Great. So let me go ahead and uh, share my screen. I'm going to pull up um, a presentation for today. Is everybody able to see my screen? Yep, looks good. Wonderful. Okay, so just wanted to have a quick introduction to myself. Um, so my name is Chris Stoner. Um, I'm, I'm Christopher today, so I'm a little fancier than usual. Uh, I work at uh, Goodwill of Orange County. Um, I've worked there for um, just about 16 years uh, come November, so I'm getting close to my uh, anniversary of working there. Um, and primarily I've worked um, within different employment services uh, for people with a wide range of different disabilities. Um, a lot of individuals that I work with um, are on the spectrum. So that is um, um, a group of people that I'm very familiar with working with and um, very happy to work with um, and, and really enjoy working with. Um, I oversee several programs there, um, all of them employment focused programs. Um, so I do um, oversee a program that's specifically for deaf and hard of hearing. Uh, I oversee a program uh, with uh, where we're working with individuals on their social security benefits. Um, I oversee um, a couple programs working with youth. Um, uh, some with disabilities, and then I also oversee a program working with um, youth that are justice involved. So um, a pretty diverse a range of different programs and services um, that I'm involved in and uh, keeps me really busy. And um, it's very rewarding work and I uh, enjoy, um, you know, being able to provide those employment supports um, to members of the community. I think it's fantastic. Work is um, a very important thing. Um, it gives our lives structure and gives purpose. So, you know, I, I really um, encourage employment um, for, for all of you guys um, and for anybody that you may be working with. So today we're going to be talking about um, a new program that uh, Goodwill has recently started with the Orange County Workforce Development Board. Um, it has the not so fancy name of AB 1111. Um, so I usually start uh, any presentation with quotes. So today I had uh, Temple up. Uh, many of you guys uh, may be familiar with Temple. Temple um, does, um, works in the, the industries with animals. So designs um, uh, uh, different structures and things for, for, for animals in farming. Mm -hmm. um, and does a lot of public speaking, uh, both yeah. on autism as well as um, as well as animal rearing. And the quote that I had from Temple was, um, the most important thing people did for me was to expose me to new things. Um, and that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna expose you to um, a new program and a new opportunity out there that's maybe a little different than some of the um, other offerings that, um, that you may have seen in the past. So we'll be chatting more. So here's some background on AB 1111. So this is kind of how this program came to be. So a little bit of a um, little bit of recent history. So AB 1111 um, actually uh, came to be in October of 2017. The California Legislature approved AB 1111. So AB 1111 stands for Assembly Bill. Uh, so it's a State Assembly Bill 1111. Um, and it's the Removing Barriers to Employment Act, okay? And that establishes the Breaking Barriers to Employment Initiative. So I bolded this section in the middle here because this is really the, the important piece here. Uh, the purpose of the initiative is to create, grant pro to create a grant program that provides individuals with barriers to employment the services they need to enter, participate in, and complete broader workforce preparation, training, and education programs aligned with regional labor market need. Okay, and basically what that means is there the program is um, the programs are, are projects that are done throughout um, the whole state of California, targeting different populations. Uh, but really, the focus of them is to look at different folks' barriers to employment and to work on providing services around those barriers to employment in order to get them um, to join the workforce 
um, in ways that sort of align with what the local employment needs are. So some of the regional labor market needs for Orange County um, are the hospitality industry, um, hospitals um, is very big, technology, um, and manufacturing. And the manufacturing in Orange County is, is very high level manufacturing. So a lot of clean room uh, facilities, um, more high level manufacturing, lots of medical um, equipment, things like that. Um, so in July of 2018, uh, the legislature approved the bill and passed the budget in order to fund the program um, so that they could begin implementing it. So the Orange County Workforce Development Board, um, they provide services. They actually operate the one-stop um, centers in Orange County. Um, they also work a lot with employers um, to do things like um, what they call layoff diversion. So for instance, during um, the early phases of COVID, when employers uh, weren't sure what to do because they had to close their doors, they helped administer funding to employers in order to continue keeping some of their employees um, on the payroll. So they actually do a lot um, of work in the community, both with employers and with um, job seekers. Um, they uh, decided to focus on the target population of people with disabilities um, uh, for the local area, which is fantastic um, because there's not a lot of um, traffic currently in the one-stop system um, for people with disabilities. So there has not been a, a huge amount um, uh, of work out of the one-stop centers with people with disabilities. And this is... Uh, in part meant to sort of bridge that gap a little bit and to be able to expand the services that the Orange County Workforce Development Board offers um, to individuals with disabilities in Orange County. Um, so, and for that, they decided to partner with Goodwill of Orange County to assist in providing the services. Um, the goal of the local project is to provide something that's called vocational preparation and social adjustment services. And we'll talk more uh, in more in detail about these. I know those are um, kind of nebulous terms or, you know, difficult to understand terms here, um, as well as soft skills development to people with disabilities, uh, while also connecting them with uh, WIOA funded services through local one-stop centers to help improve employment, career development, and job retention outcomes for people with disabilities with local in-demand industries. So I'll be talking a little bit about um, more about what WIOA means and what that stands for a little later in the presentation. So first we'll talk about the VPSA services. Um, so this is the that was vocational preparation and social adjustment services. Um, they provide training uh, to adults with a wide range of disabilities um, to help develop functional skills to improve employment outcomes. So the staff work with, an, with individuals to assess and help to identify what each individual's uh, barriers to employment may be, whether those are behavioral or structural. So some examples might be um, difficulties around communication, difficulties managing um, uh, stressful situations, right? Uh, it could be um, grooming and hygiene issues that need to be worked on. It could be, um, you know, any number of, of barriers uh, in, in that regard. And then structural barriers are more things that revolve around, um, you know, having um, the ability to self-advocate, um, having the ability to understand how your social security benefits are going to be impacted as you return to work and, and setting up a plan around that. Um, they could also be um, assistance in advocating, assistance in looking at what sort of accommodations you might need and being able to plan around those accommodations. And that way, when you get into an employment um, situation, when you're, when you're actually employed with the company, you sort of know how to navigate those waters a little bit better um, and, you, you know, you, helps you to be a little bit more comfortable in um, advocating for yourself with regards to that. 
Um, we actually um, at Goodwill have an assistive technology center um, and they um, provide different assistive devices that can help different people with different types of disabilities with um, things ranging from communication to alarm clocks for the deaf, right? All sorts of different um, items. Um, and they actually operate a lending library. So we're, we're even able to work with people on maybe exposing them to some um, new assistive devices that maybe they weren't aware of were options to them. Uh, training is individualized and it's meant to meet the participant's specific needs, okay? So um, this, is, uh, this type of training is one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, so this isn't provide, provided in a group setting and it's not a one size fits all scenario, right? So we look at what an individual's barriers are and we tailor the services and instruction and classes around what that person's individual barriers might be, okay? So if grooming and hygiene, for instance, is not something that you struggle with, you're not gonna have to sit through classes on grooming and hygiene, for instance, right? Uh, so it's just going to focus on the things that, that, you know, an individual needs to focus on. Okay, so here's some examples of EPSA service. I've kind of given a few. So hygiene and grooming, interpersonal skills and appropriate workplace interaction, stress and anger management. Um, in addition, there'll be employment preparation um, type classes available. So job searching skills, interviewing. And interviewing is very different right now than it's been in the past because a lot of it is happening in spaces like this with, with the video. Um, so, um, and that's really, you know, I've seen that as both a blessing and a curse. Um, for folks that maybe have some anxiety about some of the social interaction, um, that those, being able to do the interviews via a video actually has, um, has been helpful for them, right? It's, it's actually been a, a benefit to them. So, you know, giving people um, the ability to sort of practice through those and, and work through those and do mock interviews with people. Um, transportation. Um, so if an individual maybe needs help with mobility training, learning how to use um, public transit or other transportation services um, and providing supports around uh, transportation. Um, social security benefits planning, as I mentioned, can also be incorporated depending on um, if that fits an individual's barriers. Um, accommodation planning, which we discussed, and financial literacy. So once you start working, you're gonna be earning some money, um, you know, some planning around, you know, how to spend that money appropriately and um, how, to, how to plan and how to budget. Um, were there any questions in the chat, Judy? Uh, not yet. Okay, so I'll, I'll go ahead. If people have any, please um, type them in and I'll let Chris know. Okay, I'll go ahead and continue on then. So the other um, thing that's, that's covered here is soft skills development. So some of the topics may be kind of similar in soft skills development as they will be in VPSA, but these are more provided in a group-based setting. Um, so soft skills are really non-technical skills that impact an individual's performance in the workplace and enable someone to interact effectively and harmoniously with other people. Um, there's a lot of different definitions around what soft skills mean. And I really like um, this one um, because I, I think key to soft skills is that ability to interact effectively and harmoniously with other people. Um, and that's going to be a big focus on this, right? You want to be able to um, demonstrate that you're able to work with um, a team and work with coworkers, and you want to be able to um, demonstrate that ongoing. Um, soft skills are really essential to obtaining employment, right? They can be seen in that job interview. Uh, the people are able to see right in that interview whether or not you have the, the, that ability. Um, they're also really helpful in retaining employment, so keeping employment, um, as well as growing in community integrated employment. And what I mean by growing is getting promotions, right? Um, so often for individuals with disabilities, um, the type of jobs 
that are sort of available tend to be in this narrow window. And I really want to use this project, and I know the county is, is definitely on the same page, of this being really about career development and being able to get those promotions, uh, having those skills, not only to just get the job and keep the job, but to get those promotions, you know, and to be able to, to move up in a company and, and do uh, more complicated uh, tasks and work and, and be able to grow. Um, in addition to the individualized VPSA trainings and services, soft skills development classes will be available to participants both through the Goodwill of Orange County, and they're also gonna be available through the one-stop uh, centers as well. So Judy, were there any questions at this point? Yes, um, okay. there's a, a few. So okay. um, one of the questions is about how to apply, mm -hmm. and you may go into that a little bit later, but I, I wanted to mention that. Um, another question, Uh, was where you work in terms of which Goodwill do you work at? And then the third question, oh, this is a good one, and I'm glad you'll be answering this, is do you have to be a regional center client to participate in this program? And okay. The well, that one I like the best. I'll start with the last one. No, you do not need to be a regional center uh, client to participate in this program. Um, as a matter of fact, I think this program is perfect for people who may be um, weren't able to get into regional center services, but really need that extra support beyond um, what is typically offered. You know, Department of Rehabilitation provides wonderful, marvelous services to people, but often um, the amount of support, um, typically they close the, the case, they consider a, a successful closure after 90 days. Uh, for a lot of cases. I know some of that is, is, it has been changing uh, with recent uh, legislation, but um, you know, the, there's, it's not long-term support like a person would get with, with regional center. Um, this is really about developing those skills a little bit further. Um, uh, as a matter of fact, as we kind of get into the presentation a little bit more, we'll be talking about WIOA co-enrollment and the follow-up period during WIOA is, is a full year. So there, there's certain aspects of the service that could still be accessed for a full year. Um, so, you know, I, I think it's really great to be able to wrap as much support around people as possible. Um, and um, regional centers is not, is not a prerequisite for joining this. Um, uh, you know, we intend to serve a pretty wide range of individuals with disabilities, um, not just those that are regional center eligible. And then as far as which office I work out of, um, I work primarily out of the Santa Ana office, um, so our main corporate uh, location. Um, services for this are, are being provided um, mostly remotely at this time. So we're doing a lot of these classes and services uh, via platforms like Zoom. Uh, we do try to schedule in-person intakes with people, and we usually do those at our office in Tustin. Um, but we can be flexible with people and we have done intakes over um, uh, Zoom as well. So, um, you know, we're kind of open to that. I do like a little bit of that in-person communication. I think it is, it's, it's helpful. Um, uh, you know, uh, Chris, I wanted to add, add a question to that, um, sure. especially as you're talking about assessment. So do people need to have a formal diagnosis in order to qualify for the service? Yeah, so there does need to be um, a diagnosed disability. Um, if an individual has um, gone through, um, you know, special education in school or any of those things, we may be able to use those sorts of documentation to help establish that. So I know sometimes that can be, um, those can be very tricky to obtain. Um, so we're happy to, to meet you and work with you and kind of look at what is, what you have available and, and we can kind of help determine whether or not what you, what you, what documentation you have might, might make you eligible. So, okay. And, 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 just... and, and I wanted to add something to that. I think one of the differences with Chris's program is they're looking to help people, not looking to exclude people. Right. And so 
um, if say you haven't been accepted as a regional center client, don't let that be a, de de a deterrent to absolutely. contact Goodwill and, and the one stop. Yeah, ab absolutely. And, and you know, this, this program does have eligibility requirements and we do need to make sure those are met. But, um, you know, I like to think that when folks are reaching out to me, if I'm not able to provide a service here, I'm able to offer other suggestions for services that, that we may be able to offer. Um, so, um, um, you know, there, there, are always, there are always options and um, I've been with Goodwill for a very long time uh, and uh, I'm pretty well connected with a lot of folks um, in, in the local community. So we like to make sure people get connected for sure. Were there any additional questions, Judy? I know there was a third one. I think I forgot the... the, yeah, the a couple about. people have um, put some in since, since uh, you've been answering questions. So let me uh, check on them here. One is, do you need to be a... Um, I think this is what well, says vocational rehab VR client. I don't know if they mean Department of Rehab. Yeah, client. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I presume that that's... You know, VR is kind of what... Um, DOR is sort of referred to throughout the whole um, US. Country. Yeah, so DOR is really kind of California specific um, language, but no, an individual doesn't need to be with Department of Rehabilitation in order to provide this, or in order for us to provide this service either. Okay, then a question about in terms of a, appropriate diagnosis is mm -hmm. uh, does ADHD qualify for this service? It may. It may. I'd, I'd, I'd probably need to see the specific documentation and probably like, you know, IEPs, you know, I'd, I'd need to kind of see what's available in order to make that determination. Okay. Um, but, but as a general rule, yeah, I would say, yeah, provided the, the documentation is, is sufficient. Um, okay. And we, and we'll work with individuals on, um, you know, looking at what they have and, and um, suggesting things and, and, and helping them. Uh, through the process of applying for services. So. And then there's a question, trying to understand the one-on-one -on -one training that you're providing mm -hmm. about how many hours of one-on-one -on -one, um, support would a client receive? It's, it, I would say it varies um, because it's individualized, right? So mm -hmm. an individual might need more and an individual might need less. I would say it's a general rule of thumb. Uh, you're probably looking at... Um, I would say at least 80 hours of training. Um, but again, it would, it would vary for individuals. Um, and we are working with people's schedules right now because we do know that folks leave busy lives. So I do have staff that are available to provide some of um, these services and classes, um, you know, during evenings and even on weekends. So, um, uh, and really in terms of like the span of time, it's really going to vary from individual to individual. Some folks might um, just need a little bit of work um, on some things and then, um, you know, maybe go on to receive more support services through uh, the one-stop center. And, and some folks might need to, to, to do a lot more, you know, so it really is going to vary from, from person to person. Okay, you've gotten a couple more questions and then I, we probably should let you continue with your presentation. So I'm going to ask these last two and then let you move on. Um, oh, two people, there's two questions and I'm not sure. I'll, I'll read them together. And when is this, how is this different from PVSA? And then the other person wants to know what PVSA stands for. So I think maybe <laughs> answering the two together so, might make sense. So PVSA is Personal Vocational Social Adjustment. And that is a service that is available through Department of Rehabilitation. Um, they're similar in terms of, of the services provided. I would say that this is a little bit more longer lasting. Um, and as we get into the service a little bit more, and as I'm kind of continuing on, this also does include uh, for um, most uh, individuals, uh, a work experience component uh, as well. So that's a little bit of a different you know, differentiation between uh, a PVSA and, and a VPSA. Um, also, a PVSA doesn't traditionally have any focus on kind of the structural barriers. It's usually more focused on the behavioral barriers, and this we're able to kind of focus on both. 
So that's kind of how it's a little different from a, from a PVSA. Um, we'll let you continue. We have a couple more questions in the queue, Chris, mm -hmm. but I'm going to let you continue. And then the next break, I'll ask you these um, other questions. Okay. If that's okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. Okay, so here's some examples of um, soft skills uh, training topics. Okay, so self-awareness, self-advocacy, which we've talked about. Um, some folks might need more individual one-on-one -on -one work on self-advocacy. So that could potentially be more of a one-on-one -on -one, um, VPSA uh, service as opposed to soft skills training, depending on the individual. Um, some folks, a, a group presentation and, and uh, some group trainings on self-advocacy might be sufficient. It's just really gonna vary from individual to individual there. Um, Self-presentation, um, communication skills, time management, uh, adaptability, which I think we're all learning these days, right? We're all learning how to adapt to, um, uh, to the times that we're all living in. Um, and uh, so I think that's a really big one. Um, and uh, collaboration, you know, how to work together. So those are some of the, the soft skills topics that are covered. Okay, um, and this is another component is paid work experience. Um, this, this component isn't necessarily going to be offered to every single individual. It just depends on what their level of prior work experience is. But work experience may be offered to individuals participating in AB 1111 and the work experience is paid. Um, the paid work experience will allow um, individuals to apply lessons learned through the VPSA services and the soft skills development, the development within a work environment. So a lot of times if a person's going to a class on some of these sort of soft skills topics or they're meeting with an individual and, and getting one-on-one -on -one services, um, kind of going over some of these topics, there isn't really that opportunity to apply them in a work environment. So the work experience is a really great way to be able to um, actually be able to utilize them in a real work environment and a, and a place to reflect and learn um, about how to apply those things in a work environment. So work experiences will be offered concurrently with other services. So that means at the same time, um, and mentoring and job coaching will also be provided to help participants navigate the work environment um, with the tools that they've learned through the process of participating in the program. So traditionally a job coach, you know, is helping to support an individual in a job. Um, but in this case, the job coach will also be aware of the VPSA curriculum and the soft skills curriculum that that individual is working on and can help mentor and guide them through the process of lessons learned during the workday, right? So, you know, a situation comes up, how could that have been handled? How could that have been handled differently? Or are you handled this really well? You know, a, a good way to sort of reflect upon some of those lessons in a work environment. And I think for a lot of folks, that's really key to um, being able to uh, apply those lessons learned. Um, that way it's not just going in one ear and out the other, you're actually getting an opportunity to, um, to, to use those um, uh, tools that you've picked up and um, to be able to refine them a little bit in the work environment. So the other component um, that's available, so is WIOA services. So, um, and these, th there's, WIOA stands for Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act, um, uh, which, which is designed to help job seekers um, access employment, education, training, and support services to succeed in the labor market. Uh, WIOA training funds are designed to serve dislocated workers, adults, and youth who are in need of training to enter or re-enter labor markets. So that includes adults and youth and dislocated workers with disabilities, right? Um, a lot of the WIOA services are those services that are provided out of the one-stop centers. So um, not, depending on what a participant needs. So let's say an individual is not with a regional center and doesn't have that long-term uh, support for job placement assistance, right? Or let's say, um, you know, an individual needs that extra boost, right? They could, they could be receiving services um, uh, through the one stops um, under WIOA as well um, as, as part of their um, program. 
Um, so that'll be also be available to many people. Um, and these are some examples of those um, WIOA services. So development of an individualized employment plan, um, specialized assessments, uh, counseling, job search assistance, work experience. Um, so they do things like uh, OJT, um, they do things like um, internships, they can connect people to the trades. So if an individual wants to work um, you know, more in a trade that requires some training or an internship, um, they can provide some connections to those services. Um, occupational skills training, which um, typically an occupational skills training is something that leads to a certification. Um, so, you know, examples could be, you know, learning to weld, right? It could be learning to um, operate a forklift, for instance, right? So something that actually leads to an industry recognized certificate. Um, supportive services. So those could be things like um, some financial assistance if needed uh, in order to participate in services. They could be transportation assistance, um, other things of that nature. Um, and then as I indicated before, follow-up services, which, which do last a whole year. So for individuals that, that go through the AB 1111 program and also end up connecting with the one-stop centers uh, through WIOA, um, they really get um, a pretty lengthy period of time uh, for follow-up services to be provided. So, and that's, that is pretty much my presentation. If you want to kind of continue with the questions, Judy, on, on the screen now, you guys will see um, an email address and a phone number. Um, that email address is um, shared by several of my team that work on the AB 1111 program. Um, so it's addressing barriers at ocgoodwill.org. So if you're interested in getting more information about the program or you're interested in applying, that would be a wonderful place to start. Um, there's also a phone number there. Um, that phone number um, will typically go to voicemail. There's several of us that, that man it on occasion, um, but I would say it typically will go to voicemail and that actually gets forwarded to that email address as well. So if you don't have uh, fantastic email access or if the person that you're interested in discussing the program with doesn't have great email access, um, they could also call and that will get to us as well. And then there's also a link to the One Stop um, website um, for more information about the One Stop Centers. So Chris, should I uh, share some of the questions that yep, we got queued up here? Yeah, let's see what, let's see what okay. questions we <laughs> and, and, and keep them coming in, folks. So mm -hmm. the next one is, what types of industries are you partnering with? Um, are there specific companies or university or state county agencies you are partnering with? where internships will be available and where they have made commitments to this program, perhaps a list might be made available down the road. And to what degree will these partners offer real hiring beyond two weeks of training? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, in terms of different partners, there's a lot of um, different employers that Goodwill of Orange County has already worked with. So there's a lot of, uh, of employers that we've placed supported employment um, uh, individuals at, uh, folks who work with regional center. Um, those will probably be our primary focus uh, for starting with the work experience. I know the um, county also has several that they have as well. So like 2110C um, has been a partner. Um, we've, we've, we've been looking at the possibility of doing some work experience training uh, with them. Um, that would be doing uh, work over the phone. Um, so that may be an option for some individuals to even work from home uh, on occasion. So, and, and in terms of commitment for, for hiring people beyond, um, you know, it's something that we highly encourage. Um, it's not necessarily a requirement of the partnership with the employers for this program. So it's not something that, that I can guarantee, but it is certainly something that is, that is encouraged. Um, and in terms of a list of, of different employers, I, I think as this program continues to develop, we're just kind of in the kickoff uh, first couple uh, months here. So we really kind of got started in, in September, uh, late September. 
Um, as the program continues to develop, I, I think we'll be able to make um, a list of employers avail available as we start providing more of those work experience programs. So Chris, there was a question on the services provided, you know, some of the one-on-one -on -one training and all that. And the question is um, who's delivering them those trainings and what kind of experience or qualifications do they have? Yeah, so I've got a couple different staff that are actually doing that. So I have um, uh, an instructor who's, who has been working with us for um, about six years now. And then I also have um, our main case manager for this is actually um, maybe familiar to some individuals from Department of Rehabilitation, um, Dr. Reyes. Um, who has been with Goodwill for, oh geez, about 30 years um, and is a, um, uh, has a couple different degrees in psychology. Um, so he's very experienced in, in working with, um, with this population and he'll be sort of the, the lead case manager on all cases. So he'll be the one sort of directing services for folks. Okay, there was a question on the salary um, but I, I would assume it's job specific, but, um, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, a... it's, it's minimum in terms of the work experience training, it's, it's minimum wage or higher. Um, for those of you that might have had experiences in the past with 14 C certificates, none of that applies here. These are minimum wage or higher. Um, uh, it is going to be industry specific though. So and then... Yeah, and then there's a question about if you have to apply for AB 1111 and WIOA separately. So, you know, you, you, anybody has the option of applying for WIOA separately. Um, but typically when we're working with an individual uh, for AB 1111, we'll, we'll work with you on navigating through that referral process. And so we've, we've had several meetings with um, uh, individuals at the One Stops that, um, that uh, do the WIOA services, that provide the WIOA services. Um, and we've actually worked out a, a, a really warm handoff. And those services will probably occur concurrently um, to an extent for some individuals based on their plan. So they'll, they'll be a very warm handoff between the two. We will actually be um, you know, providing some services at the One Stop Centers. We've actually done a lot of training with One Stop staff as part of this program um, in order to um, provide them with information about working with individuals with disabilities, as well as to provide them with soft skills um, training um, that's available for, for folks to to access there. So, um, so there's been a few train the trainer. Oh, excuse me, somebody's talking. Uh, so let me mute them. Um, uh, so Chris, um, well, first I wanted to comment on the training. I actually attended one of the trainings, but there with Chris and it was a really great training. It was one on soft skills. And I think one of the nice things about it was it appeared that the one-stop partners, so people who work with the one-stop that help find opportunities for their job developers that are um, incremental to the actual one-stop facilities. So imagine that they work with a whole network of employers, similar to how uh, uh, Department of Rehab has other providers that uh, are job developers. Anyway, all of them went through training. So what was great was that you had these group of job developers. It was it was it was a multiplier in terms of expanding the number of players in the market serving us, because uh, our community has been, had a narrow group of uh, vendors who were job developers. And if you expand that into the mainstream community, then it's going to, but in so doing, expand the number of opportunities that um, our community is exposed to, which I thought was really great. Yeah, ab absolutely. And really like WIOA, when it first came about in, in 2014, um, for, for those of us who've been kind of in the workforce development uh, arena, a big part of that was about collaboration. Um, so the spirit of this, you know, for, for a very long time, um, it's been sort of like, okay, this is your barrier, this is your path, right? 
instead of everybody working together and pulling re pulling resources together. Um, and we're really seeing a lot more of that. And this project is a really good example of, of that. So it's great to see more training going out to one-stop staff and other providers um, uh, on working with individuals with disabilities and providing those soft skills training and, and helping people understanding the importance of that. So it's, it's been fantastic. So Chris, there, there are some more questions. Um, one is about timing. So if someone were to contact you and apply, what kind of uh, time frame? what would be the runway before they'd actually start working with you? It's going to vary slightly. There are a lot of doc. There are a lot of documents that we have to gather to apply for services, particularly if we're looking at doing co-enrollment in in WIOA services, right? So um, we do need documentation around uh, income. We need um, verification of address. We need um, you know diagnosis information. So um, it really depends on the individual. But so far, what we're seeing. Um, is kind of a two meeting structure um, is how our, our intakes and enrollments have been going so far. So the individual meets with um, uh, or the team, uh, does an intake, um, kind of gets a review of the program. Um, the beginnings of the plan start to be developed at that point. Um, and then, um, you know, it's sort of determined what documentation that individual is going to need for the services that they're looking for. And then from there, we schedule a secondary enrollment meeting to meet in person to, to do the full uh, enrollment process. So right now, that whole process has been taking about a week to two weeks. We've had some people take a little bit longer because uh, their access to documentation hasn't been as good. Um, but I would say we're looking at a week to two weeks before services start um, after okay. reaching it. Um, there was some confusion about the internships. They say, how long it is it a year? six months i think it's just two weeks but <laughs> so it really is going to vary so when you get into the wioa services there's a lot of different types of work experiences that they offer um so the ones that i'm referring to are primarily the shorter term ones right um that are kind of meant to be more of an aspect of the um vpsa services right but with come roman into into wioa if an individual wants to get into the trades and wants to do an internship and get into the trades and that becomes part of their WIOA plan structure, that might be a longer lasting um, work experience. So it could vary, uh, but I would say, um, generally speaking, we're looking at a shorter term uh, work experience, um, but with, with the opportunities to maybe have more longer term work experiences uh, down the road with, uh, with WIOA. So there was a question about kind of how the day is structured. So is this like an everyday thing? Is this in the morning or the afternoon? I mean, what kind of a time commitment is it for the individual to participate? We, we will work with your schedule. So that is, that is kind of our motto right now. We're not doing like a program day sort of schedule. So this isn't like a, um, you know, get up at, at 8 a.m. and attend a program for a day, like a regional center service would be. Um, this is um, really scheduled around what an individual's uh, needs and schedule allows. So some of the folks that we're working with right now maybe have a little bit of part-time work that they're doing and are looking to um, gain more employment and gain, gain skills in order to move into, um, you know, more full-time or more skilled employment. Um, we're working with individuals who are also in, in attending college, right? So, you know, we really want to work with individual schedules. But in terms of, of time commitment, I would say you're, you're looking at, um, you know, probably, you know, about 10 hours a week worth of, of trainings. And so, it, but it really could vary from individual to individual. Uh, but we will work with your schedule. Um, so and as I said, we, we'll, we can provide stuff during evenings and weekends as well. So um, my schedule, my, my staff schedule will uh, flex to kind of allow that. Is there any educational requirement, high school diploma, college degree? No, we'll, 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 we will work with any educational um, level. Um, if a person is uh, without a high school diploma, we, we will probably 
try to connect them with resources to obtain uh, GED. Um, that's, that's a very likely part of the plan for, for individuals in that arena. But no, I've, I have folks that are enrolled in the program right now that have um, bachelor's degrees, and I have people enrolled in the program who don't have high school diplomas. So um, pretty wide range there. Um, and we're, we're open to, to all. So. Okay, here's a bunch of questions. So <laughs> um, it's like trying to understand who the, the person asking this question is a professional in the field. So, mm -hmm. um, so that's why some of these questions are a little bit more detailed, but wanted to understand the composition of the intake team wanted to understand if there's any income limitations for the people applying to be in the program and a sense of how many people will, will you be accepting mm -hmm. and um then the last one is kind of more a different area but uh, can you help them enroll in a trade school yeah so, so in, in terms of the trade school that's that's probably going to be more WIOA services so that's that's more relating to the one-stop services which which we can work with connecting them on um in terms of of income level there's not necessarily an income um level requirement for the ab 1111 services themselves but there are low income requirements um around priority of services for some of the WIOA services right so um a person may be eligible for certain components of the WIOA services, but maybe not not considered a priority for services um, if they're not considered low income. Um, and really, um, it, you know, that's, that's, gonna, that's gonna vary and that's really more kind of the one-stop um, end of the services. But as far as the AB 1111 portion, no, there's not um, an income requirement. Um, and in terms of the structure of the team, can you ask that again, Judy? I just yeah, to... sure. It was kind of wanting to know um, who the intake team was. Was it a team? Was it an individual? Kind of understanding the composition of those. Yeah, are... so, so it's actually uh, the intake team right now is a team of three people. So we've got um, my services um, assistant, Justin, who um, kind of helps with scheduling and tracking um, and um, also helps with uh, a component of this program is that uh, in order to participate in a lot of the county programs, you have to be registered in Cal Jobs. So um, he's sort of helping to facilitate um, the Cal Jobs um, portion and, and helping people with getting signed up for that. Um, there's also our instructor and our, our case manager they're all doing the intakes directly. So the same staff that would be working with the individuals are also the staff doing the intake. So it's, this isn't, um, I know for some of the other services that we provide at Goodwill, we've got um, specific intake staff, but for this one, uh, it's really the, the case management team and the instructor that are going to be providing all of the, the intake and enrollment services. So Chris, in terms of, I guess these are both kind of capacity and time, um, I guess the first question is how many people are you, do you foresee being in the program? Yeah. And then the second question is how long, uh, you know, let's say somebody started, how long would they be in this program for? I know that you would be overseeing them for a period of time, but how long do you, would the training go and when would they start maybe applying for jobs? So kind of a sense of how the months might roll out. Right. For right. So, um, so I'll start with the number of people. So this project is designed to serve 150 people um, over the course of um, two and a half years. So that's that sort of capacity. Um, there, we do plan to do some over enrollment beyond that level. So um, it's likely that we'll probably serve closer to 200. That's sort of what I'm shooting for. Um, but um, really the, the, the grant calls for 150. So um, that kind of gives you a sense of, of capacity here. Um, for what was the second part of the question, Junie? So the second part is like looking at how 
people would be engaged in the program? Oh, how, how long? How yeah. long would it so, last in terms right. of their in, engagement? So, so it, it really could vary from individual to individual. I would say anywhere from one month to three in terms of the training. <laughs> Um, but the trainings themselves could be concurrent with job search, right? So just because um, I'm not a big fan of like you have to get through A, B, and C before you get to the job kind of thinking, right? Um, mm -hmm. So um, we can be working on applying for jobs while we're working on these skills. Okay. okay. Those, those two things can happen concurrently. Uh, it just depends on what an individual's barriers are. If, if there's some stuff that really needs to get resolved, then it really needs to get resolved first. But generally speaking, you know, I'm a fan of, of trying to integrate services and not keep people waiting. So um, while these services might be from, you know, from one month to three months long, um, that doesn't necessarily mean that there won't be any job search activity or even working um, during that period of time. So a number of our members have college degrees um, and typically the jobs that are presented to them through uh, some of these employment programs are not really designed for people with college degrees. Right. Will your program have um, opportunities that uh, a college degree would be an asset? And what kind of jobs do you foresee there? Yeah. So that's, that's that's definitely one of the priorities here, particularly in partnering with, um, you know, with, with the WIOA programs, right? So the WIOA, WIOA programs, because the Orange County Workforce Development Board is really working a lot with employers um, and um, doing a lot of that career development um, piece, um, we do envision this being something that, um, is able to elevate individuals towards more career focused employment uh, as opposed to just being placed on a job. So some industries that we're currently working on with, with individuals is graphic design. Um, I, I have an individual that we're working with um, on that. Um, uh, we are looking at uh, hospitals. Uh, that's one of our um, target areas. So hospitals, manufacturing, hospitality are sort of the target industries in Orange County. Right. Um, and so this grant is really, anything the Workforce Development Board is doing is going to uh, be focusing on the target industries in the area. So we have done a lot of work with hospitals. Um, we, at Goodwill of Orange County, we do uh, project search. Right. Uh, which is working with, um, internships with a lot of the local hospitals. So we do have a lot of connections uh, with the hospitals. So, so that is a potential career path um, uh, for individuals with a, with a college degree. Um, and also with some of the manufacturing, there's very high level manufacturing in, in Orange County that's more around medical equipment and stuff that's more lab kind of centered. Um, so it's not the kind of assembly work that you think of when you think of manufacturing. Um, there's actually quite a bit of that in Orange County and a lot in technology as well. So um, those will be kind of our focus areas, but that doesn't mean that we wouldn't be willing or able to look at things sort of outside of that scope. Okay. I think this will have to be the last question because we're, um, we're okay. hitting, hitting the top of the hour, but uh, I guess this last question is, you know, will you guarantee employment? I mean, is the goal to get people hired after the training and after all the preparation? So are you being it, measured by successful? We are being measured. Yeah, we are being measured by employment outcomes, right? So um, in terms of the grant funding, that is one of the measures. Saying guaranteeing employment, it's a very hard, I try not to make promises that I can't keep, right? So I can't guarantee employment for every person who, who's enrolled because life happens, right? But it is one of the measures of this program. So it, we are being um, measured by our capacity to get people jobs at the end of the day. So um, it, it is definitely of the utmost priority uh, for folks in this program. And, and as I indicated, you know, our goal, you know, between me and the county, uh, you know, Nakia has been really passionate about this as well, is looking at 
some of those more non-traditional types of job placements and not being focused on sort of what we, we normally um, see available. So um, really about that career development piece. And so, um, so yeah, I mean, in, in terms of, uh, you know, of promise, I can't promise that every single person that gets enrolled will land their dream job. Uh, but I will say that we are judged by our capacity to do so. Okay. Listen, I wanted to thank you, Chris, for coming tonight. And I just wanted to express to our members that this is a new program. And part of the reason I rushed Chris onto, onto doing a call with us early is because they have a limit, 150 people, maybe a few more, but they're at the beginning of the program. And so this is a great opportunity to take advantage of an excellent program that not only helps people find employment, it works on some of their skill set, and it, um, you know, it, it, it's a really more comprehensive, and it doesn't require you to be a regional center client. So from, for those reasons, I think it's an excellent opportunity for our members. Did you want to say anything else, Chris, or thanks again? No, I just want to say thank you guys all for participating and, and for your questions. And it it's, was great to see so many uh, people kind of lively interacting, um, uh, you know, in this evening hour when, when we're up against a debate. So this was probably a much less <laughs> intensive conversation than you could have been taking part in. So I appreciate everybody's participation today. It, it really um, was wonderful to see.